Coming up tonight on KSL Outdoors. Raising a skyline. We're back hunting monster muleys with our friends from King's Camo down in the Sonora Desert of Old Mexico. Wow. Good times with great friends chasing big bucks. Coming up next. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eagle he is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Buenos dias. It is opening morning. We're hanging out with the Griswolds. We got Kevin and Mike and the old guide Edgar back in Mexico. What are we looking for? A big two by three today? Yeah, big big two by four. <laughs> This is the third time our friends from King's Camel have invited us to hunt with them down in the Sonoran Desert of Mexico. We've had some great success those three years and we're hoping to once again come away with some great memories. It's the opportunity to shoot a buck of a lifetime. I mean, there's not a lot of deer. Some days you go and you only see a couple and then around every corner, you never know. That 200 might be there and that's the opportunity. In Mexico, the hunts are held in December and January right in the middle of the mule deer run. That's pretty neat. You know, that's what it's all about. I think they're in the rut. <laughs> if he was bigger, if he was a four before? Yeah, we have a four before he put him on the edge. Nice deer. She heard my mouth on the cheese man. So it's day two and we're cruising along and it's the morning and there's still mist in the air and, and some clouds and some fog hanging around the mountain peaks. It was really a beautiful morning and we're going down this road maybe a half hour into it and we stopped a glass and old Whalen, he takes a look up on this peak a couple ridges away and immediately spots a doe and then a buck. Great on the left, on the back. What are you thinking my ears say? Fronts are good. Get Raising on. a skyline. There's a perfect picture right there. What do you think, Clark? Thanks, good. Nice buck. Yeah. For you? For me. For <laughs> <laughs> you. Me? No, him. Yes. See. I figured the buck to be about 29 inches wide and about a 185 to 190 class typical. Kevin disagrees. I think he's even better than that. I really do. Do you? Yeah. Well, that's a giant. We're looking at him and he's uh He's a pig. He's got a couple does. Not quite big enough for, for Kevin, but he's plenty big for me. Okay, we're good. Let's go do this. It's a giant deer, giant, big, typical. We take off down the road for about 100 yards, and then Edgar turns. You know, we're about 1,000, 1,100 yards away from these deer. He turns and goes right through the bush, right at them. And you know, you're kind of zigzagging, and. It's so thick, we lose sight of them. Hopefully still there when we get up here. We get up on top and we can't find the buck. And we look over in the little basin that we think he went down into and he's not there. We're like, oh, where do you, I'm, you know, my heart sank. I thought, we're not gonna find him again. We go left, no tracks. We go right, Kevin's like, hey, I got the tracks. Edgar gets on the tracks and we go another maybe five, 600 yards, come over a little rise and all of a sudden Edgar's, Edgar was grabbed. He's like, right there, right there. Are you on the way here? Yeah. Go ahead, Eco. Woo! What is that? Oh my gosh. Come on in. Casey gets up. Good job, man. Oh, 
I totally missed the buck the second shot, but luckily it wasn't even needed as the buck is down. I don't hope I hit his antlers that last one. Yeah, I don't. So let's go get him. What a rush, you know, to, to get a buck like that and to do it with some great friends. You know, all these guys at King's Camel, they're, you know, they're a great locally owned company and operated. Who better to spend a, a great hunt and uh, shoot a tremendous buck like this than with, you know, people who are like your family. Oh my gosh, look at that antler sticking up. Oh! I told you. What you guys doing? Tell me he's one freaking 80 buck. He's a slug! There is no ground shrinkage, as the buck was what Kevin thought he'd be. 30 inches wide and pushing 200 inches. That is a tank. I mean, he's just a, he's a buck of a lifetime. I know that gets cliche for a lot of people, but that's the biggest deer I think I've ever killed. No, I guard again. <laughs> it's always a Griswold adventure. Clark, <laughs> Rusty. <laughs> I told you. I got whipped in the face this morning with a stick, bleeding down the side of my face. Kevin's licking me and licking my face, trying to make me feel better. I'm like, I'm fine. Just let's find a deer. And look at that. White hair came through. He's pulling his weight. And old Edgar, man, you can't say enough about that guy. Good guide. Kevin, this is it. This is three years, and uh, we always have a good time. Whether or not we get a buck, we always have a good time. It's a good time. It's the beauty of the Sonora Desert. The, you know, the camaraderie of friends and family, and it's all worth it. Yeah. And look at this King's Camel, how it just blends so perfectly down here. It's so beautiful. <laughs> hey, a lot more coming up here on KSL Outdoors, but first, tonight's Burt Brothers Quiz Question. There are almost 2,000 species of cacti found in the Americas, yet by far, the saguaro is best known as the iconic image of the deserts of the western United States and northern Mexico. Our Burt Brothers Quiz Question tonight is, how old can a saguaro live? The answer when KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford, returns to the Sonoran Desert. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Sportsman's Warehouse, Evanston, Wyoming, and Camp Chef. Welcome back to the beautiful Sonoran Desert of Old Mexico. Coming up, we hunt for some giant bucks. But first, let's answer tonight's Burt Brothers quiz question. And our question is, how old can a saguaro live? And here's the answer. The saguaro cactus is considered to be one of the largest cacti in the world and is the largest cactus in the United States. It can attain heights in excess of 50 feet with trunk diameters approaching two feet thick. They can also weigh over eight tons and live up to 200 years. This country here is typically what they say the coos deer are, are habitat in. Down here, this steeper train, this mesquite and heavy cover, small little silver ghost that can run through this stuff just like, just like a rabbit. Wary and an expert at using cover, the small coos deer, a subspecies of the white-tailed deer, is another deer you can hunt here in Mexico. This deer has developed a reputation for being able to vanish from view in the smallest amount of cover. Many hunters refer to them as the gray ghost. This coos buck is the biggest we've seen in seven days. We hesitated and never saw him again. Just a typical Griswold going up the road and look over and there's a beautiful trophy coos standing at 50 yards and got ready and by the time I made my decision he just took that fatal leap and out in the desert he disappeared. We've had a great week, uh, frustrating at times. Uh, you could go, I went a full day without even seeing a deer. Uh, I know a couple other guys, same thing. Just around every corner could be that, that buck that you're looking for. Heading out this morning, going up to go coos hunting, driving down the road. Look off to our left, our guide Edgar sees one. This is a great buck, and once again, Kevin decides to pass and give his nephew Waylon an opportunity to shoot his first Sonoran Desert deer. The buck starts walking towards us. Ready? Yeah. 
first shot, they didn't know if I hit them or not. Heard and cranked in a second shot. <coughs> shot right in just right in front of him, led him a little bit too much. <coughs> Coming forward, I look to my right and he's laying right here dead, only 15 yards off the road. Wow. <laughs> yes. It's an awesome, beautiful deer. Wow, look how white he is. He's <laughs> Over 30. Big, old, mature deer, heavy bases. This can be a fun hunt. But before you book a hunt, get some references from past clients of the outfitter you're looking into. Do your homework. Make sure the outfitter knows the rules of getting not just you, but your rifle across the border and back. Ryan has hunted all over the world. Absolutely. You know, you, you need to come prepared. Probably most importantly, uh, research where you're coming and who you're coming with. You know, that your accommodations and, and, the, and your guides and your trucks and everything is are what they're supposed to be. That's really important. And you have to be on a ranch that actually holds gear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, turn your head, smile. Boy, one thing about the Sonoran Desert, if you ever come down here hunting coos or mule deer, bring some boots and some leather gloves. I don't have mine on me right now, but boy, my hands would be ripped up right now if I didn't. Everything here has a thorn, it pricks you, it pokes you draws blood every once in a while too. Hey, more coming up here on KSL Outdoors in a moment, but first, back to the guys at Fish Tech for tonight's fishing report. Here they are, Utah's forgotten stonefly. Hi, I'm Mickey Anders from Fish Tech with this week's forgotten stonefly report. And not many people think about fishing stoneflies in the winter, but they do exist. You can see them they're right here. The cool thing about stoneflies is you can fish something a lot bigger on the surface. The midges and gnats are still hatching in, and they're going to hatch every day, and you're going to see them on all of our rivers. The stoneflies only come off on a few rivers, but when they do, they're a lot of fun because they're four or five times the size of the midges and gnats. The same patterns that you use for midges and gnats are going to work. Just go bigger. So when you come down to get a few flies, add some of these big ones to your collection. Now the nymph is my favorite way to fish and I think they fish the best because these guys are crawling really active on the bottom and coming up on the shore. My favorite patterns are black and olive combinations. My favorite one's this little pocket water pattern. I've done really well with that fly. Now these flies are bigger. There's one more quick winter tip and that's using peacock. Make sure you've got something big with peacock bodies on it to fish all winter long. For these tips or a whole lot more, come on down to Fish Tech and we'll help you out. Now for tonight's fishing line. Welcome back to our Sonora Desert Mule Deer Hunt with our friends from King's Camel. You know, I've been shooting stories with the Pritchett family long before Kevin Pritchett purchased King's Camel. Their generosity has never ceased to amaze me. You got him, you got him! You got him. Yeah. I've watched them donate money, turkey hunts, even a new van for a needy yes. family. Got it, got it. But what's most impressed me about this family is that they're willing to donate their time, their expertise, to give back to Utah sportsmen, women, and children. One of the things I love giving back is with what's been the joyous for me growing up, which was the only thing I could do when we didn't have anything. But let's go with my dad and family hunting. We, you know, we didn't do Disneyland trips. We didn't do lagoon trips. We didn't do whatever. Not it was hunting, and that was something to look forward to. And so, to me, it's what I enjoy. And you know, the joy now to do that is any joy of shooting a 200-inch meal deer. And now that Kevin owns King's Camel, I've seen his generosity grow within the King's family as well. Welcome, how you guys Hi. doing? Good. They've opened their doors many times to outfit dozens of families in need of a good time outdoors. We enjoy it and we're excited about it. We're excited to see them do it. When we stop getting excited about it, it's time to quit doing it, so. We really feel at King's Camel, we have something to offer every level of hunter. Uh, we want to keep it affordable, but we also want to make sure that the, the performance uh, of the fabric work for everybody. We're back on the hunt. It's the bottom of the ninth inning. Ryan and I have ventured onto a new piece of property, hoping to fill his tag before we have to leave. Unbelievable. We're down to the last day. Last day. We I came know. out this morning. 
right down the road. Adam goes, big buck. We stop, two does here. We glassed him up. He's just a big frame three point. I think he's about 28. I think I'm gonna kill this big three point. It's day, uh, day six, basically last day. <laughs> Sonora mule deer, man. He's a stud. He is a stud. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go take a look at him. I'll tell you what, totally surprised about the Sonoran Desert and what it has to offer, man. Yeah. My first time down here, and uh, to be honest, can't wait to get back. So, huh? 28 wide? Or I think so, yeah. Eye guards. We've hunted hard. Yeah. Cool deer. Yeah. I'm excited. We've had a great time down here with Kevin and Jed and Mike and Waylon and yourself. Just, just a tremendous place. Wow, last year we were here, it was beautiful. Sunny, 80 degrees. This is hunting weather. Look at this, overcast. Clouds have moved in. <laughs> it's pretty cool out here right now in the Sonoran Desert. Hey, let's find out how the weather is back home by turning it over to the guys and gals in the weather department. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle, back here in the Sonoran Desert. Hey, don't forget, if you're looking for some ideas to get your family into the outdoors, maybe you're interested in the upcoming ice fishing events, go ahead and log on to our outdoors calendar page at ksltv.com. I don't know what to say, Kevin. Thank you. That's all I, I, I mean, I'm speechless. I'm glad. I was uh, happy for you, Adam. Yeah. I think it's the biggest buck I've ever taken. Oh, good. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, he's real close. If not, the memories behind it are the best. <laughs> and you know, we talk about that all the time on the show, right? Yeah. Get out, make memories with your family, and, and we mean it. I mean, these guys are like family to them. They, family to me. They call themselves the Griswolds, and <laughs> sometimes I'm Uncle Eddie, and <laughs> sometimes I'm not. <laughs> but you know, when you're out, make sure to take lots of video and uh, pictures of moments like this, because you know, when you're gray and old like this guy, you're going to want to remember them. <laughs> then submit them to our snapshot contest. You might win our big prize from Cam Chef. Here it is now, the best of the week, our snapshot of the week. We kick it off right where we left off, back in the Sonoran Desert with brothers Frank and Charles Wright. On New Year's Eve, Frank took his biggest mule deer ever, this huge 29-inch wide, 207-inch brute. His brother Charles also punched his tag with this dandy 31-inch Sonoran buck. The brothers say it was an experience neither will ever forget. Zach and his wife Tori had a few firsts this waterfowl season. Tori drew a swan tag and didn't just shoot any swan, she shot a giant. Zach had a few goals this year as well. He wanted to shoot a limit of Drake Mallards and some Canada geese, which he did. And he also shot three cackling geese as well. Hopefully, Zach says, there is more to come. Braley sure had a great big game season last year. It started with her belly crawling 50 yards to get a shot at this nice 5x5 five five bull elk. Then on the deer hunt, she made an offhand 100 yard shot and dropped this beautiful 4x4 four four buck. It has always been a dream of Kevin Horrocks to go to New Zealand and hunt the red stag. As you can see, he did it, but it didn't come easy. First back surgery set him back, then he was diagnosed with cancer. But last year, his doctor finally gave Kevin the go-ahead, and along with his wife, Kevin fulfilled his dream. Kevin says his cancer is back, but the memories outdoors is what keeps him going. And finally, our winner tonight was hanging out with some friends when they got a call that a lion was in a tree. Brandon Tucker took this great shot of this mountain lion staring down at him. His friends, who chased lions, had called to give them the opportunity to see something most never do. Brandon says it was a great excuse to miss calculus that day. After the pictures, they pulled the dogs off and the cat was able to go its way. A great shot, Brandon, that has now won you our big prize for having missed calculus, for having the snapshot of the week. Remember, submit your pictures or video plus a brief explanation of your latest outdoor adventures online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins the new Striker Stove from Camp Chef, perfect for the ice or the backcountry. You know, you can't control the weather and you can't control the fishing, but if you eat bad outside, that's your own fault. Enjoy a hot meal with Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. It's the friends, family, and uh, the camaraderie. Look at the beauty of the Sonora Desert and uh, 
you know, share it with those that we enjoy being with. And the smells, it rained down here. I've never, I've never smelled. have you smelled something like that? It's crazy. It's a whole different thing in the desert. Yeah. Hospitality is great. You got Food is great guys like Edgar and oh, yeah. Felipe. They work their butts off. They, I mean, Edgar runs around and he's like, come on, on the land, on the Get over here to her. And I'm going to shoot the doe. And Edgar's like, what are you doing? No, no, he's over there. A lot of charades down here. <laughs> senorita. Yeah, senorita. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Those are memories that last you for a lifetime. Never forget that. And that's why you get outdoors and you enjoy the great state of Sonora away from Utah. It's a great relaxation, great trip to get out here and enjoy this beautiful country. Get out and do the same. I'm Adam Eagle, KSL Outdoors, with all of our friends here from King's Camel. Good night.